Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Buck Brief. This episode, Ryan Gerdusky joins with the latest on all things politics. He is the host of the, or rather, well, he's a host of many things. He's also the writer <laughs> behind the National Populist Newsletter on Substack, which I highly recommend you go check out and subscribe to. Mr. Ryan, good to see you. Explain RFK Jr., what is going on? Explain this to me. Is he going to take more votes from Biden or from Trump? Is he getting on the ballots? What the heck's with this VP thing? So just like make this make sense, please. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. I had a conversation with my buddy, Megan McCain, and she goes, this is not going to be the vice president of my country. I can tell you that right now. Um, the uh, the um, yeah. So first of all, he's only on the ballot right now in Utah. He says he's has the uh, he has enough signatures and his PAC has enough signatures for other states like Nevada, Georgia, New Hampshire, um, and uh, Oregon, and a couple few other states. The, but there's there's going to be a lot of legal challenges of whether or not his PAC can get signatures for him as a campaign. They're really unsure about that. So we'll see where he lands with his with this woman as his VP. She has an estimated billion dollars from her divorce. Um, they have money to sit there and, and fight every legal challenge and try to get on the ballot in every single state. Uh, but as of right now, it's one state with a possible, I think, seven others. Uh, the Cornell West, by the way, is on four states. So Cornell West is on actually more states right now than, um, than RFK Jr. Uh, what is the phenomenon of RFK Jr.? He does have a hopeful message. His response to the State of the Union, which is a nine-minute video, if you haven't seen it, it's really good. Like, it's really, really, really good. It's not completely accurate. He talks about how his uncle, when he left the presidency and was assassinated, uh, left the country in peace and prosperity. Um, he failed to mention the Vietnam War, but that's fine. That's okay. Everyone's kind of seeing through rose-colored glasses. Uh, I think the VP pick, I think it's interesting for two reasons. I think with the VP pick, whatever her name is, I totally forgot it, actually. Shanahan? With the VP pick, Shanahan is her last name, yeah. With Shanahan, um, it's definitely looking more like a center left campaign than a center right campaign, because that's what he was trying to do. He was trying to kind of forge that middle ground. And, um, and she's talking about, you know, chronic diseases and social, a lot of social justice stuff. She's not going to attract a lot of right wingers to her cause. I think the fact that she's like this Asian vegan woman from California is definitely not the same thing as if you would have picked that former baseball player. Like that would have been a much different vibe than than you know than than who he, than Shanahan. Um, I think she was a pick primarily for her money, although they probably agree ideologically. Um, her announcement speech was a little like a TED talk more than you know just a speech, a presidential speech. Did did, did you see the? Uh, the Native American like chanting slash <laughs> apology thing before I have a rule. Yes. I have a rule, Ryan, anyone who starts off a meeting with a Native American apology for stealing your land thing. I don't trust. I don't trust them. I, that, that, <laughs> that is my rule. Yeah, it's it's definitely giving left wing vibes. Uh, I don't think that it's right wing vibes at all. But I will say, I mean, if Cornell West gets on more states and if RFK Jr. gets on more states, if that's the vibe, I don't see how. Yeah, there will be some crunchy Republicans who like care a lot about vaccines who might really like RFK Jr. and they care about chronic diseases. It's a bit of an it's an important issue, but it's a niche issue. And um, if they're doing Native American tribal dances and reparations for slavery, there's only one kind of voter that really attracts. And that's either. Um, black voters who like the Kennedy brand or very, very, very liberal white voters. I need, I need you to just narrow this one down for me because you see Trump on truth social is now worth billions of dollars in the publicly traded markets. Welcome to America, everybody. This is the country we live in. It's pretty amazing. Um, but uh, Trump uh, tweeted, or <laughs> tweeted truth out like RFK is a left wing lunatic, basically, but I'm glad he's running because he'll take more Biden votes or let's say that he gets on meaning RFK Jr. A bunch of different like 20 different states. And so he's on, you know, at least three or four important swing states. Right. Let's say that that happens mm -hmm. um, or even just three or four important swing states. Forget about the overall number. Are right. we very highly confident based on what we can see in the data 
that he will take more Biden than Trump votes? Or is that very much still TBD? I think it's, I think it's, I believe it's probably more, well, the fact that Biden is attacking him aggressively, Biden's already released his first ad against RFK Jr. That shows you the amount that they fear he resonates because it is only 1% or 2% in some of these states that will move the whole election. Um, And I think they know that. Um, And RFK, nationally, she'll probably get somewhere between 2 and 5% of the vote at the current rate he's at, I imagine. I mean, the independent vote is always higher in the beginning of the year and always gets lower as the year goes on. So that, I think, is really problematic for his candidacy. But if he's able to get on and really kind of be a an issues candidate that talks about things that people care about, I think you'll either A, see Biden start trying to capitalize on his issues. Um, I think that Cornell West is going to run completely on a pro Hamas, pro Palestine thing, and he's going to try to get those Palestine voters for uh, for his campaign. I think that RFK Jr. really cares about health care a lot and chronic disease. And it's very, what he's saying is not wrong. I mean, it is not wrong that we are in a very sick and morbidly obese country. I just think that when you're talking about uh, what what pesticides are being used and what, you know, uh, what did she talk about? She said something like... I, I just feel like RFK they, is, run, is running to be somebody else's, like, EPA chief or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, to me, or, or FDA. I mean, it, it doesn't seem like I know enough even about what he thinks generally, philosophically, about government to know, like, well, what is this guy all about, right? He's good on the COVID stuff. Okay. Right. And and, and he's, he's okay on immigration on the border. Yeah. Like he does talk about positively on the border and we need a border wall. Like he does say those things. Um, but this every time I've heard him essentially talk, I mean, he talks about bringing back manufacturing. Mm-hmm. He does mention these things. His ad was like, we used to make blue jeans in this country and we don't make anything anymore. That's not, that's not an uncompelling ad for people. Um, but the vibe you give out is matters a lot. I don't necessarily think he gives off. He doesn't even remind me of his father and uncle. I think that he gives off. Um, I think he gives off much more of a left wing coastal, you know, elite thing. I mean, for crying out loud, it, you know, he's the godfather to Glenn Close's daughter, and his ex wife was on Curb Your Enthusiasm. This is not a man, or his current wife rather, was on Curb Your Enthusiasm. He's not a man who's really um, moving into Michigan. And marching in Mississippi for the poverty strikes with uh, with with MLK, like his dad did. This is somebody who is very much giving the sense that he is a very elite person. But there's a lot of disenfranchised voters on all sides who don't like Trump and who don't like uh, Biden, who will be probably casting a ballot for him out of protest. And maybe he'll get a few issues voters, and that's what really matters. If he can pick up like the whole uh, Hamas is a genocidal thing, or uh, Biden is too old voters, then who knows. All right, we're going to come back in, and you're going to answer this question for me, uh, Ryan. Um, I was asked this at a live event recently. Um, who is going to win the House, control of the House, and why? We're going to get to that with you in a second. Uh, first up, uh, sponsor right now is Patriot Defender. Legal defense for you and me, the kind that we need most. No-cost legal defense to protect your rights, freedoms, reputation, and your way of life. Speak up at a school board meeting about vaccine mandates, suffer consequences, Your legal defense is covered. If your right to free speech is denied and you suffer consequences, your legal defense is covered. Patriot Defender is the company. I'm a partner in Patriot Defender. I'm a member of Patriot Defender. And this is something you should check out. If it's available in your state, I highly recommend you join and become a member. They'll also provide you with IRS audit assistance. PatriotDefender.com. Patriot Defender is the only membership that goes beyond just concealed carry weapon defense. Patriot Defender will cover what others won't to protect you, your family, and your livelihood, PatriotDefender.com. All right, now, my question to you was, who's going to win the House and why? Uh, what do you think? So the House has never, the House has only flipped, I think, once where the president is one, the, the House has flipped in the other direction from the presidency. Right now, polls have Trump. I wrote this for my subsec at the National Popular Subsec. High-quality polls, polls that are really uh, well-reviewed, well, well-sourced, and well-trusted. And they come from a variety. People answer from text message and email and live callers versus just internet polls. Um, they are they show Trump with about a 1.5 to 2 to 2.5% uh, national advantage, which is extremely large, the largest he's ever had in his entire, all three candidacies. Um, 
online polls or lower lower uh, value polls that show Biden actually edging Trump out for the very first time in about six or seven months. Um, the national elect electorate in 2022 was a two point Republican majority and Republicans got a bare minimum of the popular vote. If it is, oh, I'm sorry, of the House in 2022. If it is, if it's looking like those high propensity polls are right and Trump is not gonna win, but win the popular vote, Republicans are still not gonna win the House by that much. You're talking about probably, uh, you know, 10 to 15 seat majority at the very, very most, just because a lot of states have been gerrymandered six ways from Sunday. You know, New Jersey, there's only three House seats that Republicans really can win in New Jersey. There's only three, maybe four in Illinois, California, maybe one or two that Republicans currently don't hold. It is the most narrow of margins. New Mexico is maybe one. Um, but like we're capped out of Florida. Republicans have no seats that currently are not Republican that they can hope to win in Florida. They have no seats in um, in Georgia, they have one. They have none in North Carolina. They have, well, are going to pick up the three in North Carolina, but besides that, they're done. Virginia has one. West Virginia has zero. Ohio has two. Indiana maybe has one. There's not many, though, everywhere. Where it's going to matter, where the where it's going to matter if the Republicans win is going to be blue state Republicans. There are, I think, 14 Republicans right now, I forget because of George Sanders leaving. Maybe, there's, maybe it's 13, 13 Republicans who are in Biden districts. If those 13 Republicans can hold on um, and they can pick up the few uh, Democrats who are in Trump districts, then they'll hold on. But it's it, those 13 Biden Republicans are what really matter. But Joe, you think that there's a good shot of Republicans could could maintain the House then? It sounds like if, that's if Trump wins the popular vote. Yeah, if Trump wins the popular vote, if he gets within if these high propensity polls are correct and he continues going on. Uh, I know the media is saying, you know, inflation is great now and, you know, things are. Things are all wonderful. He's invited to get that amazing State of the Union speech, and he's on the up and up, and he's showing he's got energy. Um, I don't know how well that media narrative is actually working, aside from these internet polls, um, but uh, I, I don't particularly see it. The state polling, that high quality state polls that have come out in the last three weeks have all been very good for Trump. The Maris polls in Texas and in the it was North Carolina and Arizona and the Des Moines Register poll in Iowa, um, all very, very well, well sourced, high quality polling. All were very, very good for Trump. I want to ask you um, in just a second to, to tell us how they think they turned this against Trump or, you know, switch the momentum around so that uh, Biden is at least starting to even out the field, if not pull ahead. We'll get to that in a second. First up, sponsor American Financing. This is the family-owned mortgage company. That is what I went to for my mortgage uh, for my own home. And right now, they're saving homeowners like you an average of $854 a month by tapping into home equity to pay off high-interest debt. If you have high-interest debt on credit cards, for instance, this is a great way to reduce debt and save money each month. Mortgage rates are now in the fives, lower than they've been in some time. So make a 10-minute phone call to American Financing's salary-based mortgage consultants to find out how much they can save you. Call today. They never charge any upfront fees. You may even be able to delay two mortgage payments. American Financing is the name. 800-777-8109. That's 800-777-8109. Or visit AmericanFinancing.net. That's AmericanFinancing.net. NMLS 1823-34. NMLSConsumerAccess.org. APR for rates in the five start at 6.6% for all qualified borrowers. Call 800-777-8109 for details about credit costs and terms. Ryan, what's the plan? Is it just... Democracy's in peril. Trump is Hitler, and uh, they're not going to let you get abortions all nine months of a pregnancy. Like it, it just feels like that can't be enough. Um, to certain voters, it's enough for sure. Um, but they're that they are they are emphasizing that Trump's second term is going to be a bloodbath. I mean, we heard that we heard the term blood was a bloodbath, right? That's what he sat there and said yeah. in the, about the cars. Oh my gosh, uh, that, he said bloodbath. Was, yes, that's what it was. Yeah. That was like, I mean, end of the world style conversation. And at the same time, you have, here's the problem. You have a niche group of Republicans nationwide who are making the party seem very weird to average voters. They're scaring the normies. The Alabama IVF um, case, for example, all of these little things say to moderate voters who are, let's say, double haters. Double haters are really who decides this election. And people who hate both Trump, Biden and Trump. Um, 
back last year, back when I was very pessimistic, that's when the Wall Street Journal Fabrizio Lee poll um, said that the double haters were voting for Biden by 50 points. The most recent poll, I think it was the Marist Texas poll, said that they were voting now for Biden by five points. Trump had closed the gap with people who hate both Trump and Biden. And if you look at the 538 average, this is the first time that um, Biden's approval ratings are actually worse than Trump's. If you, um, I think they, they are exasperating the divide and they get back those people by sitting there and saying he really is a recluse. He's really, um, you know, he's really, he's going to prison. He's going to all these trials. He, you know, owes people all this money. He can't be trusted. Look at all of his former aides who hate him now. Uh, why would you vote for this chaos? And I think that them selling cap is the message over Bidenomics. They're dropped Bidenomics. I don't know if you saw the Axios piece that came out. Axios reported how many times Biden has said Bidenomics over the last few months. And it's gone from like 18 times in a month to zero. He doesn't speak about that at all anymore. That messaging failed. People personally don't feel good about the economy every time they go to the grocery store. Um, inflation is still higher than what people would like it to be. And you have high interest rates at the home mortgages where people feel like they can't buy their first home. Gaza has definitely splintered a portion and a fraction of the Democratic Party. The Gallup poll show that a majority of Democrats support Gaza over Israel. Um, that's definitely splintering over some Arab. There's a lot of things going wrong for him. So sometimes you are unified by the people that you hate in common. Certainly in 2016, Trump won a lot of people who just could not bring themselves to allow Hillary Clinton to be president. That hatred for Hillary was enough to unite people who didn't like Trump. Biden is hoping that that happens again, that the hatred for Trump is so strong, it's strong enough for strong enough to elect reelect him despite everything going wrong for him. Um, before we let you go, and everyone should check out the National Populist Newsletter. I'm a subscriber. It's great. It's Ryan's uh, Substack newsletter. Uh, you have a Springsteen t-shirt on. Is this because... <laughs> Is this because there was a special deal for two dollars at the thrift store, or is this because you are you unfortunately are such a, hater. a Bruce, Bruce Springsteen, Springsteen fan? <laughs> Bruce Springsteen was like the soundtrack of my father's life, and I've seen him in concert probably seven times. He is the greatest living life. Before. Oh my god, he is. I don't, he's I don't a poet. He's an artist. And he's the greatest living live performer. This is terrifying. R Ryan is well, so well, wise on so many things. The name most, who's better. the most overrated musician, uh, oh or, or you know, music act in in modern history, like America, That's anywhere. Not. Bruce Springsteen got one song. It's not even that good. Everybody, well, I, don't, I don't even get one it. Song. I can't. He has I can't even so believe it. So much good music. That's I like people who like want to hate Bob Dylan or the Beatles because they're like, oh, you know, they're they're Bob overrated. Dylan no, sucks too. Not really good. Bob Dylan sucks too. His, Bob Dylan can't sing. Wait, can I tell you a good story? I was with his yeah. grand, I was at a dinner with his grandson, and uh, who was like an arms dealer or something now. And I was like, this is like the depressing decline of America. But uh, I had nothing to talk to him about, and so I texted a friend. And I was like, who? What do I ask Bob Dylan's grandson? They go, ask him if his grandfather banged Evie Sedgwick. So I looked over and I go, did your grandfather bang Evie Sedgwick? And he goes, what? I go, did he? I just, I just need to know. And he was like, no, he didn't. And I was like. Okay, cool. Who? That was the last he took. Edie Sedgwick. Who's that? <sighs> yeah, don't talk about culture, Buck. Don't talk about culture, okay? Okay, That's all right, all right. I got to stick to it. Edie Sedgwick was, was Andy Warhol and Bob Dylan's muse in, in the 60s. And Andy Warhol got her addicted to heroin. She died tragically, but she was an it girl of the late 60s. Uh, look, or ask somebody. I don't know. Ask somebody. I'll, I'll, fig I'll figure out. something out. Subscribe yeah. to Ryan's newsletter. Don't, Just don't, listen, Clay, to, don't listen to his, you know, Clay won't know. Uh, just listen to uh, listen to his politics, not his music taste. Don't go get a Springsteen T-shirt. Ryan Gerdusky, everybody. Ryan, thank you. Welcome.